Later tonight at nine, there's brand new drama with a dark discovery for a community around the lock. Right now, the latest political developments and the rest of the ITV News. Boxed in, May shuffles the cabinet and promotes a close friend. The Prime Minister appoints Damien Green as her de facto deputy, but former cabinet ministers say she's had it. I think it's fairly clear that Theresa May cannot lead us into uh, another election. The DUP says there's no deal yet, but there is progress towards a pact. Also tonight, the fake suicide vests the London Bridge killers wore, police say, for maximum terror. And Hammond recovers from this to apologise to his family and friends. I'm sorry to my wife Mindy and my daughters is in Willow. I'm sorry for being such a colossal... Yeah, all right. This is ITV News with Alistair Stewart. Good evening. Clinging to power, Mrs May gave a big promotion to a close friend and avoided angering potential enemies as she completed her reshuffle. There were no sackings and just a few sideways moves, but former Cabinet colleagues made it clear they thought she was a spent force. Nikki Morgan said a leadership challenge was likely. Even her would-be saviours, the Democratic Unionists, contradicted. A Downing Street claim a deal was done. It was a work in progress, they said. More from our political correspondent, Carl Dinnan. After a difficult week, Theresa May did what she always does on Sunday morning. She went to church with her husband. Then it was back to the office to appoint the rest of her cabinet. The Prime Minister made her old friend Damien Green first Secretary of State, an indication that she may be widening her circle of advisers as her cabinet have told her she must do. You've already seen some changes in personnel in Number 10 Downing Street. Do you welcome that? Um, I, I welcome that, of course. Uh, it's going to require a different approach. We're going to see, I hope, more collective uh, decision-making in the Cabinet. Uh, um, the I and other senior colleagues have made that clear to her. This afternoon's reshuffle was a limited affair. David Liddington is the new Justice Secretary. David Gork, the new Work and Pensions Secretary, with Liz Truss moved sideways to his old job, Chief Secretary to the Treasury. How long they last is another question. Some Tories think a leadership contest is on the way. I suspect that you, you, it could be uh, over this, this summer, uh, and I think it should involve our party conference as well. I remember those days when we actually had the contenders at our party conference. But the most likely contender, Boris Johnson, has denied reports of a leadership bid. Theresa May got by far the biggest uh, mandate anybody's got for, in my, for my party for decades. Uh, she leads by far the biggest party in Parliament. Jeremy Corbyn did not win this election. It's absolutely right that she should uh, go ahead, uh, form a government and deliver on the priorities of the people. And I'm going to be backing her and absolutely everybody I'm talking to is going to be backing her as well. But someone is plotting. Jeremy Corbyn hopes to launch a parliamentary ambush on the Queen's speech. We're going to put up a substantial amendment to the Queen's speech which will outline what we fought the election on and Parliament will have a choice. We've made it very clear that this government sought a mandate, it didn't get it. There's a lesson there. But Mrs May still leads the biggest party and, with the Democratic Unionists, has a majority. So she keeps the keys to number 10. For now. Carl Dinan, ITV News, Westminster. With a bit of overnight confusion and more talks needed to hammer out a deal propping up her government, Mrs May will meet the DUP leader, Arlene Foster, on Tuesday. And the many issues at stake are likely to include ensuring the Northern Ireland peace process remains protected. As Neil Connery reports from Belfast, there are misgivings on both sides of the Irish border. They are the kingmakers at Westminster. The ten Democratic Unionist MPs and their leader, Arlene Foster. But overnight, there was confusion over the status of their talks with the Conservatives. Downing Street initially said the principles were agreed, before issuing another statement saying negotiations continued. Today, the DUP leader said good progress had been made. 
we're uh, supporting her to try and find a solution to what has become a hung parliament and we want to uh, try and get a national government uh, for the stability of the nation uh, and also to deal of course with all of the threats that we're currently under. The clock is ticking as both leaders seek a deal. It seems it won't be a formal coalition but will mean the DUP will back the Conservatives on major votes giving them the majority they need. We have reached the outline of an agreement with them. Uh, it's not going to be a full coalition, um, but they, like we, want to ensure that this country has stable government going through the EU Brexit negotiations. But with the power-sharing institutions at Stormont suspended since early this year, fears are growing about the impact of any such deal here. The Irish Prime Minister, Enda Kenny, tweeted today he'd spoken with Theresa May indicating his concern that nothing should happen to put the Good Friday Agreement at risk. Sinn Féin say it will all end in tears. The DUP have decided to uh, back her process. She has said that she is up for a continued austerity over the next uh, five years. Uh, that will have a huge impact on issues like the health and education. And the DUP have the answer to that. The Democratic Unionist leader will meet the Prime Minister in London on Tuesday as talks over any deal continue. But what price the DUP is able to extract in return for its support is still far from clear. Neil Connery, ITV News, Belfast. And let's return now to our political correspondent, Carl Dinan, who is live for us in Downing Street. Um, how safe do you think Theresa May has made herself this evening? Uh, she's still not very safe. She's still working on her reshuffle at the moment. It's just been announced that Andrea Leadsom will be the leader of the House of Commons. Uh, Mrs May will probably survive the week. She may survive the month. But as you heard Nicky Morgan saying earlier, the chances of her getting all the way through to the party conference in the autumn um, are an, a lot less certain. She does have a couple of things going for her at the moment. One is that Conservative MPs who are absolutely furious with her still don't think this is the right time to move her out of the way, just on the cusp of the opening of Brexit negotiations. And even Boris Johnson, who's thought to be the you know, primary contender, doesn't want her moved. The other thing is that the DUP will not support a Labour Party led by Jeremy Corbyn under almost any circumstances. So Theresa May has still got some time in here, but it's borrowed time. Carl, thank you. In other news, pictures of the fake suicide belts worn by the London Bridge terrorists were released by police today, who said they were probably used to spread fear and panic as the gang carried out their murderous attacks. In a gesture of remembrance and solidarity with the victims, a group of British Muslims handed out 3,000 roses to passers-by. Dan Rivers reports from London Bridge. Designed to cause maximum panic to all that saw them, today police released images of the fake suicide belts worn by the London Bridge attackers last weekend. They throw into sharp focus the heroism of those who were first on the scene. It just happened automatically, really. I don't... You know, there was no thought process going on. It just, in, in hindsight, it all seems very surreal, really, thinking back to it. Borough Market remains closed as the police investigation continues. But nearby Southwark Cathedral was reopened today, packed with worshippers who'd come to listen to a powerful message. We are not afraid. The building bears the physical scars of a forced entry by police who had to check every premises near London Bridge in the minutes after the attack. And some of the congregation will have the emotional scars of those terrible events for many years to come. For some people here, it was, um, it, it was very real in that they had experienced something. They had been out in the borough market last Saturday evening. Um, and so they needed to come along and be supported by others. So a very emotional day. A rapidly filling book of condolence has now been moved to the cathedral where it will remain for the next few weeks. The Dean and Chapter hope the cathedral will now become the focus not only for grief but of recovery. For visitors and residents alike, a place of quiet contemplation where they can sit and reflect on the terrorist attack that struck at the very heart of this community. And what clearer sign of unity in this diverse city than this, a group of Muslim and non-Muslim friends handing out roses to strangers.
we are determined in defiance of those, to stand here in defiance of those who would have our communities divided. Slowly life is returning to the pubs which were targeted so viciously, but everywhere there are reminders of the horror inflicted in these narrow streets. Dan Rivers, ITV News, Southwark. Now here's something we haven't been able to say for 51 years. England's footballers have won the World Cup. Yep, it was the under-20 team which beat Venezuela in the final in South Korea thanks to Dominic Calvert-Lewin's only goal of the game. England's goalkeeper also saved a penalty, but it's England's biggest international title since the glory days of 1966. Fantastic. In tennis, Rafa Nadal stormed to a comprehensive victory today to win the French Open. The Spaniard thumped Switzerland's Stan Wawrinka in straight sets in the final at the Roland Garros in Paris. This was always Nadal's happiest hunting ground. It is the 10th French Open title of his career. Finally, the former Top Gear presenter Richard Hammond was cracking jokes from his hospital bed today after his horrific car crash in Switzerland filming his new programme, Grand Tour. But as well as the expected wisecracks, he did also apologise to his family. A video that he's released contains footage of the moments leading up to the accident. Richard Pallow has more. The moment Richard Hammond cheated death again. The television presenter losing control of the £2 million supercar he was racing through the Swiss Alps for a programme, crashing at high speed. Remarkably, he would pull himself free of the wreckage just before the vehicle burst into flames. The series producer said Hammond was seconds from being incinerated. Yes, it's true. Um, I've been dead. Again. Uh, net result being I'm here in a hospital in Switzerland. Um, this is my knee that they're going to turn from this into this, giving me a Swiss army knee, hopefully later today. I'd like to thank all of the medical professionals who got me by air ambulance from the crash to this hospital and have dealt with me ever since. And most importantly, sorry to my wife Mindy and my daughters is in Willow. I'm sorry for being such a colossal, yeah. Hammond had recently vowed to his family that he would give up dangerous stunts. Back in 2006, an even more serious accident at 288 miles an hour left him in a coma. He made a full recovery from those head injuries and in the decades since has continued to make the high octane motoring shows that have fueled his career. Oh, you bad, bad, naughty car! With this latest incident, likely to do nothing to dent the popularity of either the programme or presenter. Richard Palo, ITV News. And just a reminder of our main story tonight, the Prime Minister is completing her reshuffle. Michael Gove, the former Secretary of State for Education, is still in number 10. There is speculation that he may emerge as the new chairman of the Conservative Party, but that would mean Patrick McLaughlin also looking for a job. We'll have the details at 10 o'clock. That is it for now. I'm back later. Until then, a very good evening to you. Bye-bye.